This is Phil Kopman with a tutorial on Software Quality Assurance SQA. And as it says right there in the title, SQA is not the same thing as software testing. Software Quality Assurance takes a big picture view of the software process and asks whether the process is actually defined, whether it's being followed, and whether the results of following the process are effective. Software Quality Assurance SQA is in charge of making sure that the software process is really working the way it should. There are five main responsibilities for SQA. The first is to define and maintain the software process definition. If the software process is not written down, everyone will have a different idea of what it might be and you'll never get consistent results. The next responsibility is to train on the process and make sure that everyone understands the process and has the skills they need to play their role in the overall picture. SQA is also responsible for auditing to ensure the process is actually being followed. SQA includes diagnosing issues with executing the process. That involves keeping metrics and diagnosing process-related failures. Finally, SQA is responsible for fixing any process failures, which can include coaching, or otherwise intervening to find out what's going wrong with executing the defined process and get things back on track. The anti-patterns for good SQA include allowing process steps to be skipped. SQA is in charge of making sure all the process steps are followed as defined. Another anti-pattern is having nobody tasked with ensuring the process is being followed. While it sounds nice to say everyone has a shared responsibility to follow the process, if there's no one actually tasked with making sure that's happening, eventually it won't happen. A very commonly seen anti-pattern for SQA is spending less than 5 or 6% of the total project effort on SQA. That's about what it takes to staff SQA properly. Once your software process is written down and everyone's been trained and you have the right skill sets, SQA spends time on auditing whether or not the process is being followed. Doing this effectively requires looking at the artifacts or written things that are produced by the process. A well-defined process creates some piece of paper, some artifact, after every process step. The reason for doing this is the old saying that if it's not written down, it didn't happen. Audits allow you to say, yes, indeed it happened because we found something written down that was produced as a result of a process step. Therefore, the process step happened. It's important for efficiency that artifacts be lightweight but useful. Think of artifacts as a piece of paper that documented an arrow on the V process diagram actually happened. That does not mean it has to be a 100-page report. Sometimes a simple spreadsheet or even a photo of a whiteboard suffices but there should be something that someone other than the people who did the work can look at to say, yes, that step got completed. Once you've determined that the process is actually being followed, at least at that level, you might want to do some process quality audits. That involves whether the step got done effectively rather than just a box check. You can get some information from the quality of the written artifacts. If you have a form where all the required fields filled out and so on, but you might also do internal consistency checks and traceability. Notice that these are not deep technical evaluations because the people who are doing the technical work are supposed to be able to do that, but rather some sanity checks to make sure that the technical people are assumed to be working good faith, but sometimes they get busy or they get distracted or they get pressure and they skip some pieces. The point of these audits is to know whether or not they're skipping some pieces so that whatever caused that can be fixed. Some information can be indirectly obtained via process-related metrics. A classic one is, are defects escaping to a later process stage? By that, I mean if bugs are escaping to system test that should have been found in unit test or peer review, then you have some knowledge that there are some process quality issues back up in the unit test or peer review stages. SQA typically keeps those metrics and asks those kind of questions. Another way to monitor the quality of the process execution is sample direct observation. 
For example, every once in a while, someone from SQA could randomly attend a peer review to see how it's going. Overall, it's not SQA's job to babysit the engineers and make sure they're being good engineers, but rather to keep an eye on the health of things to find out if there's some sort of dysfunction so that it can be addressed and matters can be improved. While SQA is sometimes rather negatively seen as the process police, more effective SQA works more like a coaching system. Think of it this way. SQA defines the process with inputs from the stakeholders. They're the keepers of the process diagram, but the process is not theirs to do with as they wish, but rather a joint effort with all the stakeholders to define the right process for the company, and SQA is merely the keeper of the diagram. In support of this, SQA, again with input from stakeholders, creates and maintains templates and work aids to make it easier and less time-consuming to execute the defined process. SQA then conducts training, initial training for new team members, but also remedial coaching, guidance, or whatever based on process failures. The emphasis here is in making sure everyone has the ability to execute and understand the defined process. SQA also keeps records and metrics to ensure the process is on track. The point of metrics is not just to keep score for the purpose of keeping score, but rather to provide tools and insight that allows the team to determine if there's a systematic weakness in their process or their execution of the process so they can fix it and produce better software. It's essential to look at process failures as a coaching opportunity rather than something that needs to be fixed by blaming someone or punishing them. Everyone makes mistakes, and the point of SQA is to find something that went wrong and figure out the least intrusive, best way to fix it to get the team back on track. Perhaps the worst thing you can do as part of SQA is to keep metrics and use those metrics to punish people. Not only will you have bad team morale, but those metrics will become instantly useless as everyone games the numbers to protect their teammates. An important reason why process quality matters has to do with the cost of finding and fixing defects. This pyramid shows a typical cost ratio of finding and fixing a requirements defect as you get out towards the field. Finding a requirements defect in the design stage costs five times as much as if you had fixed it in the requirements stage, 10 times as much in coding, 20 times in unit test, 50 times in system test, and it can cost 200 times more to fix a bug after it's escaped to the field in the maintenance phase than if you had just figured it out in the requirements phase and fixed it there. Bugs introduced later, such as a coding bug, similarly multiply out depending on how long it takes to fix them. That sets aside the cost in brand tarnish and other issues that can be a real problem if you ship bugs out to the field. If you have poor process, you're likely to be finding huge number of bugs in maintenance where they're incredibly expensive to fix. If you improve your process a bit, you can find them earlier and have better quality software at lower cost. Typically, if an organization has a lot of escapes to the field, they'll concentrate on testing first. Improving your testing process, and for example, using unit test as in addition to system test and acceptance test, can help reduce bugs. But testing isn't even looking at bugs until it's already really expensive to fix them. So that's nice to do, but you want to go further. To really have a good process that's producing high quality software, you also need to do peer reviews back up front where it's cheap to find things and fix them. But those peer reviews only work if you're actually creating the artifacts to review. If you don't have a design, you can't peer review the design and find bugs at 5x instead of 200x. If your code's a mess because you're not doing static analysis and you're not following a style guide, then peer reviews are going to be much less effective at fixing bugs. The idea here is that you have to not only define this nice V process, but you actually have to follow it to be able to find the bugs early when they're cheap instead of late when they're expensive. And SQA is how you know whether or not things are working. SQA is how you know whether your process is actually being followed and whether it's being effective at finding problems when they're cheap and easy to fix instead of expensive. Here are some best practices for software quality assurance. SQA must have a broad view of quality. SQA defines and maintains the processes, 
audits the execution of the processes and measures the effectiveness of the process at ensuring high quality software. SQA also trains and intervenes to keep the process on track. Doing this takes about five or 6% of the total staffing of the project. About half of that, two or 3%, is for defining, maintaining, and training on the process, and about half of it is for the audit and root cause analysis to fix the process. The implications are that if you have a 10-person project, one person half-time should be doing SQA. At 20 people, it's time to hire a full-time SQA specialist to keep all this stuff running for you. Here are some common SQA pitfalls. SQA is not testing. People say software quality. Oh, that means testing. Well, testing matters, but SQA is something else. SQA is not about whether the software quality is directly measured to be good, but rather about whether your software process quality is good. Because good software process quality, in other words, good process, is highly predictive of good quality software. SQA is not about finding bugs in the code. Sure, that's a metric you monitor. SQA is about finding bugs and defects in the process and the execution of the process. Stated another way, if you want good software, you better have a good process. And SQA is about making sure that you have a good process. Another SQA pitfall is getting into a box checking mentality where you look at form over substance. Sure, every single document has been produced and someone did it with a photocopy machine and every checklist is the same and it's photocopied so all the boxes are checked. That may look good on a superficial audit, but you're not doing all the steps, you're just faking a paper trail. That's not going to get you quality. That means SQA needs to be more than a superficial box check exercise. Rather, use the box checking as a way to monitor how things are going and when there's some sort of issue, dig deeper to find out what's really going on. Is that the boxes got checked without the work being done? Is it that people aren't taking the process seriously? Or is something else going on? The quickest way to have an SQA failure is for the SQA staff to assume the role of the process police. The process does not exist for the sake of the process. The process exists to create high quality software. It's more productive for SQA to be the process coaches and only extremely reluctantly intervene in a police role if someone just doesn't want to follow the process. SQA staff should be extremely reluctant to become the process police because once you become adversarial, things tend to break down.